the Q2 release is actually going to be split into two different release dates. So as you know, we, are, we have quarterly releases for the 360 and Intota services, and why exactly are we splitting up the Q2 release? We heard loud and clear that while you're adjusting to remote offices and your users are working off-site, um, we want as little upheaval as possible right now. Two of our major projects for Q2 include big improvement packages to index enhanced direct linking and also to the 360 mark updates and data on demand infrastructure. And since at least in the Northern hemisphere, mid-May coincides with the end of the term, uh, particularly with the linking refinements, we want to avoid any possible disruption while folks are unable to physically get to the library. But in some pretty exciting news, the reason we're sticking with the original May 13th date for part of the release is that the customer support organization is rolling out a live chat option. So this will offer you a new direct channel of communication from within the 360 Client Center and Intota applications. And please note that neither of these releases on May 13th or June 10th will incur any downtime for you. So let's take a look at some of the details that you're going to see next week. Uh, the support team is rolling out a chat service in uh, beginning May 13th. You'll be able to chat in real time with one of our North American team members from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the link is accessed from within Client Center in Tota. And at this time, the support team will be able to address Summon, 360, and Intota services questions via that live chat link. Um, CDI content or 360KB and Ulrich's questions will still need to be handled via the Salesforce cases that you logged today. So let's repeat that. The chat link will be open for Summon, 360, and Intota services questions. Um, we continue to roll out Counter R5 advancements and now you'll see manual and sushi options for the database and platform reports. That's DR and PR in uh, Counter R5 speak. And folks that have been uploading TR reports or title reports since the last release, thank you so much. Um, you reported some issues to us and we were able to get those fixed and those will be um, distributed next week as well. Summon clients will now be able to access Summon usage statistics from Client Center rather than from the Summon admin console. And lastly, there are a number of fixes to Client Center and Intota applications that will be released, and full details of those will be coming out within the next week. So what is the experience going to be like for the live support chat link? This is when you select the Contact Us link, that is in Client Center and in Tota today, um, you will see this new landing page. One option available here is what you have today, opening a case in the support portal. And the other option that may be available from 9 to 5 Pacific time again is the live chat uh, button that is, will be in the bottom right hand corner. Um, if no one is, oops, sorry, if no one is available or if it's outside of those hours, um, you'll see what's displayed here, which is um, Asian offline. But again, um, the option exists here to log a case with the support portal as you do today. So we have a major improvements in our counter R5 support. And we have a new Sushi Harvester. This is separate from the Sushi R4 Harvester and it's built to the new standard specifications. Uh, it's able to harvest TR, DR, and PR reports in May for R5 compliant providers. And um, a mea culpa here, in Q1, I didn't ensure that the DRS forms were set up in advance of the release, uh, but we will have Sushi options available for DRS forms on May 13th. Manual upload will also be available for DR and PR reports. And I know that your most important question is when can you get the data in the in, in TOTA assessment reports? And we're on target for a Q re, Q3 release that with those. Um, there's been an awful long runway for an employing this new standard and we're trying to be very careful and deliberate in how we build and deploy it. Um, so I'm grateful for your patience in seeing those be
being able to see those reports in, in TOTA assessment. So to take a look at Sushi setup, here's an example from Client Center. It's essentially the same as it was for R4. Um, we are going to provide that DRS template for you to add your library credentials to and then select the reports that are harvested. Um, in this case, it's a Bio1 provider. Um, we, we've seeded the template with the URL and then you will need to add your requester ID and customer ID. Um, those credentials will vary by provider, but from what we've seen, requester and ID and customer ID are the most common. Um, and then at the bottom, you can select the reports that you want to be harvested. Harvesting will happen monthly as it does now for the R4 reports. And I want to emphasize that support for R4 is not going away. So Sushi for R4 and R5 will work in parallel. Um, here's a snapshot of a client center harvest for Bio1, and the harvester was able to get the J2, J4, and J3 uh, reports from Bio1. And here is the data that was processed from that file um, as it displays in client center when you click on the data link from the previous page. Um, this is one title that came through in the in the sushi harvest and you can see on the right the types of new metrics that uh, are being used by for counter r5 like total item investigations and unique item investigations so this is just to show that the data is being harvested verified um, it's it's being processed by our applications and stored um, for the point in time at which it will be available in the Intota assessment. Um, here's an example from the Intota application. In this case, it's a platform master report from OSA Publishing, and uh, this is the total stats for the year 2019 um, for that platform uh, report, which includes things like searches on the platform and total item investigations and unique items investigations. Again, the report, the data is there. Um, we're able to ingest it, whether that's done manually or um, via Sushi Harvest, and we are incorporating it, storing it, and getting ready to process with things like cost and um, addition, and nor doing normalization and aggregation in order to get all of that good information and that enriched information into Intota assessment. Um, so I know that the counter R5 can be a little confusing, and I just want to be extra clear on what will be available next week for getting counter R5 data into your system. Um, the Sushi uh, Harvester will be able to go out and get, on a monthly basis, the TR, DR, and PR reports. Um, and you can likewise upload any of those manually if you wish. For those folks who participate in our DRS program, um, the semi-annual collection that will begin in July of this year will include us collecting the annual TR, DR, and PR reports for all of 2019. So the, that annual um, collection that for 2019. And it will also include the TR, DR, and PR reports for January through June of 2020, so the first half of 2020. Um, so this would be a retrospective collection of the counter R5 compliant reports that we have not been able to support up until this point. Um, so no, no data has been lost since folks, since providers uh, started rolling out R5 support, we'll be able to go ahead and grab that in conjunction with our four reports because both of those standards are employed right now. Um, one of the other features that you're going to see beginning next week is the ability to uh, access some in usage statistics from Client Center. There's a new permission available under the 360 core permissions branch here and it's called some in usage statistics. Um, the valid values are none, view, and view edit. And when I turn that on for an operator or a staff user, um, under the business intelligence tools section of Client Center, you will see a link called summon usage, usage statistics. 
and clicking that will link you directly to the Summon Usage OBI platform. So you don't have to go through the Summon Administration Console in order to um, get to usage statistics. Um, for the June 10th release, so several weeks later, as I mentioned, we are going to have a big package of 360 link um, lookup uh, refinements. Um, this will improve accuracy in linking to many providers. Um, we worked with between 20 and 30 providers, including some big ones like ProQuest and ScienceDirect and Taylor and Francis to ensure that we're We've got the correct um, linking logic in order to get to um, those articles from 360 Link. We also invested a lot of time in the data on demand and 360 Mark Updates infrastructure. Um, that infrastructure <clears throat> will include fixes like fully encoded direct links and customization resolutions and a video type that's now, um, a video type will now show in the DOD report. Um, last but not least, um, <clears throat> we have a new article level link parameter um, for inclusion for um, ProQuest, Gale, and EBSCO host um, databases. This was the need was surfaced by um, libraries that use the Open Athens redirector proxy, but as we um, dove into it, we've figured out that making these changes, um, specifying these parameters, which include things like account ID and customer ID, actually benefit all 360 link users. Um, and it affects both, or impacts rather, both open URL and IEDL links. <clears throat> so again, this is something we de developed at the request of folks who use Open Athens Redirector, but it's an improvement in article level linking to those providers um, for everyone. And the details of adding those particular parameters into the database details page will be documented in the Knowledge Center. So as a mid-year checkpoint here, on the left, we've got the features that um, we have agreed to deliver for the Q2 release. Um, we were able to put all of those together despite um, kind of recent <clears throat> recent events. Um, and looking forward to the second half of 2020, um, we know that we have to, and as I said, we will be delivering in TOTA assessment reports using all that good data that we are now able to harvest and collect. Um, at the request of many, many, many libraries, um, we are going to be adding the last updated timestamp for databases in 360 Core and Client Center and in TOTA. Um, yes, so you will be able to see at a glance when um, there was a last full or partial update to a database. Um, the third bullet point here is possibly the most interesting. Um, I think we are kind of stepping back and surveying our current work environments and the changing needs of our libraries and um, how, how we may need to reprioritize enhancements that um, we have. Um, so. If you have suggestions, please do talk to support about them. Uh, if you would raise, like to raise a priority on something, please talk to support about that. You can also email me directly um, with the address that will be displaying at the end here. Um, I'd be happy to um, hear your input about um, how things are changing for you and how we can help make your lives easier. Um, similar to what Brent was saying about summon and accessibility, uh, we do have the PAT results for Client Center and Link, and we'll be taking a look at um, those results and addressing as best as possible um, in particularly Client Center and Link um, those the issues that we can. Um, one thing that has been on the board for a long time is limiting the EJP auto suggestions to what a what is in a profile, um, as opposed to the whole universe of suggestions. Um, so we will keep that on the board for now, um, but it will it remains to see how um, some of your uh, changing priorities will affect that. <clears throat> 